So 360 hertz monitors. This is the second one that I'm taking a look at. The first one that I took a look at was the ASUS 360 hertz. I believe that was back in October, November. I'll leave a link to that video in the description below. But today we're gonna be breaking out the Alienware 360 hertz monitor, the AW2521H. Before we continue with the review, I'd like to introduce you to today's sponsor, Luster. You know where you're looking to buy something online and you end up going through a bunch of websites and reviews to figure out what the best product is and if it's worth your money. Well, well, Luster is a free browser extension that helps you find the best products and prices effortlessly. Luster will tell you what the best options are for your budget and needs, show you all the reviews you care about right where you shop, like from Wirecutter, YouTube, and Reddit, let you compare prices across different stores and notify you when there's a sale, and it also helps me shop way smarter and I feel more confident about my purchases even outside of tech products. If you want to save time, money, and always get best in class products, click the link in the description below to check out Luster for yourself. And again, it's free, so there's no reason not to try it. Thank you again, Luster, for sponsoring this video. This one is a 25 inch panel, 1080p, 360 hertz, real NVIDIA G-Sync as well, and supports NVIDIA ULMB, and it's IPS as well, so you get those fantastic viewing angles. Starting off with the design, I've pretty much covered Alienware monitors extensively on this channel, so if you wanna learn like more of the ins and outs, this one is basically exactly the same. A really good and very ergonomic stand, but it's a little big for my taste. I probably would still put it on a monitor arm just to preserve some space on your desk. Two HDMI ports that are limited to 240 hertz and one display port 1.4 which gets you that full 360 hertz a headphone jack four usb ports and the usb pass through that goes back to your computer as well and then you have three rgb zones as well so one being on the power button one being that alien head on the back and the other being that large light bar on the back of the stand as well in terms of the design it's very similar to the alienware 240 hertz monitor ips that came out last year it's pretty much the same thing it comes in black i don't know if they have a white color plan for the 360 hertz it would be cool if they did but uh really the only difference between this one and the 240 hertz version is that there's a 360 hertz sticker on the bottom left and the g-sync sticker at the bottom right on the stand so that's an easy way to tell if you have the 240 hertz or the 360 hertz monitor now getting right into the gaming performance of the monitor let's talk about the ghosting real quick the ghosting performance is extremely good more or less with the fast and super fast Fast, you have a very limited amount of ghosting and it is relatively clear like my preferred mode playing on was the super fast mode on games that run at about 200 fps or higher and then i would drop it down to fast there are games that ran at about maybe 150 or 100 fps fast typically work very well extreme i did notice just a little bit more motion blur on extreme now to be honest i could play on it because it really wasn't that bad but i do feel like the overdrive was just feeding the panel just a little bit too much voltage and it was perceptible now on extreme if it wasn't perceptible that's a different story i would maybe say play on extreme but I can notice it a bit, therefore it is a little bit of a distraction. Playing on the NVIDIA ULMB is very good. Basically it just deletes motion blur, but the problem is that NVIDIA ULMB basically tanks that brightness of the monitor all the way down to about a third, maybe a little bit less, closer to a fourth of what it typically is. And for me, that's kind of a deal breaker. I like using the ULMB, but I found that things were just a little bit too dark on the panel, and I found it hard to spot enemies, and I really just ended up straining my eyes the longer I was using it in that moment. Mode. In this video, you will see a little bit of that gameplay sprinkled in a bit as well, but you probably won't notice it because the flickering from the NVIDIA ULMP basically is non-existent. It's not perceptible really by the eye, at least for me, and on camera, I didn't really see that it was picking it up from the camera monitor as well during filming. Maybe during editing, I might be eating my words here, but during filming, I did not see the monitor flickering. Now, in terms of the gameplay experience, so here's the thing. Do I notice it being a lot faster than 240 hertz? A lot, mm, I don't know. I'm not gonna say a lot and nor did I experience a massive advantage in game, but I do feel like it is a slight advantage, especially if you're playing something like Valorant or CSGO or Overwatch or Fortnite even. Games that run at very high FPS and really do respond to those Twitch reactions, especially games like Fortnite where you're pressing 20 keys at once, literally, it's, it's nuts. This probably would be a very good monitor for that if you're playing at that very high competitive level. This might be a solid investment for you. What? 
But honestly, if you're playing other games like Call of Duty Warzone, Black Ops Cold War, Destiny, or any high-end AAA that requires a lot of graphical power and typically only runs between maybe 150 and 240 hertz, well, obviously at that point, you're probably better off just saving your money and buying a 240 hertz monitor or heck, even buying a 1440p 240 hertz monitor. Because what I'm noticing is that a lot of games that I'm playing just don't hit 360 hertz, at least not consistently. You might have a spike where the game goes up to 300 hertz and then drops back down in the 200s, but more or less, I will definitely really consider buying the 360 hertz if you're playing one of those four games that I mentioned or any other game that's just not very graphically intensive. If you're buying this monitor thing that you're gonna get 360 hertz playing Tomb Raider, then, then no, just don't. Get something higher resolution that's gonna take more advantage of your graphics card. You, you gotta have a beastly PC to be able to hit 360 hertz consistently even in those games that I mentioned because if you don't, you, you just won't. You'll probably be hitting anywhere in the 200 range. And again, your money will be better suited buying a 240 hertz panel for probably 40% less than what you would be spending on this one. But with that being said, if you do fall into that very slim category of people that are good enough to actually benefit from 360 hertz and also have the money to burn just to be able to buy the 360 hertz monitor and computer that supports it, is it worth getting? I'm not gonna lie to you and tell you that the price isn't exactly uh, not reasonable. Like the panel currently is only between about seven to $800, which I think for technology that's this new is really not that horrible. And especially that competitive advantage that it's gonna give you by having just that little bit more information, about 33% on if somebody's gonna peek a corner or not when you're playing games. That is something that could help you. And since it's gonna be a little bit smoother as well, it is something that could greatly benefit your aim as well by having 50% more refresh rate available to you other than 240 hertz. Now, after 240, do I feel like it start to get a little bit of diminishing returns? Yes, but at the same time, again, if you're playing at a high level, you want to get every advantage that you can. Now, what do I think of this monitor compared to the ASUS monitor that I reviewed a few months ago? Well, to be honest, I like the color on the ASUS monitor a little bit more. It feels like I would trust that one a little bit more with content creation because I something about that one, just the color seemed a bit more accurate. Where this one, it does have 99% sRGB coverage, but I can't find a DCI-P rating on either of the monitors, but something tells me that the ASUS probably has a bit higher DCI-P rating after it's properly measured. I don't have a color calibrator yet, so I can't measure the DCI-P rating of either of them just yet, but I will have one soon enough, so I will probably start including that in the future in other monitor reviews. But this monitor is good enough to use for content creation. I just prefer the ASUS if I was gonna pick one to do both gaming and content creation. Now my preferred color format on this monitor is the RPG mode that's built in to the on-screen display. That's the one that I use primarily and to me the colors look the most balanced on that mode. You can set up your own custom color profile or even just use the cool setting I like as well. I found the most success, especially during gaming using that RPG mode. So in closing, do I think that this monitor is worth it? Well, to be honest with you, this one will probably be a lot more readily available than the ASUS model. With that being said, I do still think that this one is a very good pickup. Like I have really not much bad to say about it other than the fact that the ULMB doesn't go over 240 hertz and the brightness suffers quite a bit. But to be honest with you, the ASUS suffer from the exact same thing. So in the next generation of 360 hertz monitors, I wanna see NVIDIA ULMB performing at 360 hertz without the compromise to brightness. If there is a compromise to brightness, maybe reduce the brightness 10 or 20% if possible. But if you tank the brightness like these two monitors do, that is just no bueno for me. But that's gonna be it for this video. If you guys enjoy, feel free to drop a like. Subscribe if you guys are new to the channel as well. Huge shout out to Dell for sending out this monitor for review as well. It's a review unit. I gotta send it back, so relax. But all honesty, um, I'm going back to 1440p 27 inch 240 hertz monitors like that to me is just the sweet spot that's the preferred refresh rate and resolution currently right now i just feel like he gives you the best of both worlds and if you guys want to see my review of the 27 inch 1440p ips 240 hertz a lower monitor i will have that one linked in the description below as well because that one currently is my favorite gaming monitor if i had to pick like out of all of the ones that i've used that one for sure but if you need some competitive and really, really fast, this one's a good buy. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.